All right, let's get down to business with uh, some doors. Uh, that is the next objective in uh, the uh, list of, uh, of testing objectives for Revit, uh, is putting in doors, or actually they call it, what do they call it? Load and modify doors. Okay, so there's not a whole lot of detail when it comes to doors. I mean, you can get very deep with it. Um, and get very specific with it, but just for the general purpose of placing a door, it's really pretty simple. But um, for the doors, we want to go to the door tool. And uh, this is just the file that I was using previously. I threw a couple of interior walls in. Uh, it's not really a design, not a good example of a design or anything of that nature. Uh, so don't look at it that way. Uh, but we want to go to the door tool. It has a specific tool for doors. Anytime you're placing doors, you have to do it inside the door tool. If you're inside the door tool, of course, you cannot place any other object. You have to get out of the door tool and either start a new tool, such as the window tool or the wall tool, or the component uh, tool uh, for most other items that you would place in a drawing. So with the door tool, we want to find some doors to place. Um, normally it's already loaded with some doors. Typically it's a little larger. Oh, there it is. Uh, so basically a single flush door 30 by 80 is typically what we would use inside the house. You know, like a 30 to a 32 maybe, or even a 34 by 80. Uh, but let's just pick on the 30 by 80s and uh, just place it on a wall somewhere inside of the structure. Um, and there you go. Now that's an interior door. Um, you can place it on an exterior wall, but it's not right if you do that. Um, you want to do it like this and put the interior doors on the interior walls. But uh, taking a closer look here, there's the door that I placed. You notice that there are some arrows. Uh, these are positioning arrows. This set of arrows here, I can click the ones that are pointing up and down. And that changes the swing to, uh, you know, to swing from inside to outside. And then I have this other set of arrows that changes the swing from left to right. So, uh, you know, you know your, um, your design criteria. Um, you would have to swing those doors in the, in the appropriate location. Uh, now, to move the door, you can move it. It's real easy. You just click on it, and you can move it left. You can move it right. Um, you can even go here up in the ribbon and pick a new host for it and just click on that and say I want it on this wall instead and there you go now as you notice you also have some measurements um, these are your temporary measurements it measures to the center so the center of the door would be 4 foot 11 inches I think you can change the witness line on this uh, you can so you just grab that little ball and then line it up with whichever part of the door that you would prefer to measure and uh, then, of course, you can get that measurement. Uh, maybe you're not wanting to measure from the wall to the center. Maybe you want to measure from the wall to the uh, open side or the closed side, uh, one of the two. Uh, lots of different things you can do there. Uh, and, of course, you see it gives you measurements from in both directions. Um, so that's interior door. Uh, to get other doors other than the ones that are already loaded in here, you would go to the architecture tab and let's we'll see. Now we need to go back in the door tool and go to. Uh, so that's what I did, guys, not to miss that. But I went to the architecture tab and then clicked back on the door tool to get in the door tool. Okay. Whoops, I went into the wall tool. Okay, now in the door tool, there is on the ribbon, and this is the same for just about any tool on here. Uh, is that they have this load family folder right over here. You click on that load family folder, and uh, in this case, of course, I'm on two screens, so it popped up on the other screen. Uh, I'm going to drag it over, and I'm going to go to the doors folder. Now, I can't load anything else in the doors tool, only doors. And you've got a choice between commercial. You can also just look at uh, plain old door hardware, such as probably hinges and knobs and things like that. Um and uh, residential typically you'll go into residential click on that double click on it to open up all the residential doors and anytime you need to go back into the hierarchy of the the folders these two buttons will get you there okay uh, typically I use this one that takes me up uh, to one parent level alright so uh, door let's see exterior 
here are some exterior selections and uh, there's not a lot of selections uh, now many of these can be modified and or you can go somewhere else and download on the internet some doors but again we're not really focused on that we just want to get certified but I just thought I'd let you know um, so you know we just pick a simple exterior door click open and of course it gives us a whole list of different sizes that are available it'll do that on just about any door uh, that you click and even other items as well like windows and things like that um, but to select a, an appropriate size uh, typically I go with a 36 or a 34 by 80 and I click OK and of course you could also load you can select all of them at one time if you want to and load everything in um, in your project um, but uh, exterior door typically is going to swing to the inside anyway so uh, click here to place it same thing it's got the same arrows that switch your um, your your different swing options inside outside left or right I'm not sure what this one does I think that just okay that just moves it off of the um, now it does something else weird there but I wouldn't worry about that okay so anyway door you can move it back and forth just like you did before um, so interior and exterior doors uh, there's one other door which is a roll-up type door or garage door uh, same thing not much different you need to be in the door tool load family and uh, look for let's see it might not be here let's see exterior exterior garage okay embossed panel or flush panel uh, once you click on let's say flush panel and you get that to show up over here in the um, type selector you can actually click on it and it might offer you a different size the I think it's the other door that does that but this one does just come in one size uh, and in that case you can put these side by side uh, or let's see what else we can do with it so let's say we want to place a garage here which will be kind of odd but we'll do that now of course you see which way the the hidden lines point uh, that should point to the inside of the structure those hidden lines should be on the inside of the structure if they're on the outside of the structure that means your all your mounting hardware is mounted on the outside of the building somehow it's suspended in space okay so that is your door and it can be moved just like any other door and um, let me go in and grab the other garage door because there are some things that I'd like to show you on that one as well. Uh, let's see, what was this one? That was the flush panel. Let's go with the embossed panel. Now the embossed panel garage door. Okay, same size, but they do offer a larger 192 by 84 and you can see how much larger that is okay and one of these doors I thought it would let you uh, expand it um, left or right make it larger but I guess not um, maybe another another door in the system I think it might be a commercial overhead door that does that uh, but anyway that's all of your doors um, that's what you're gonna uh, all, all that you would actually be tested on um, I doubt very seriously that they would take you as far as uh, editing the type but if you wanted to make any adjustments to the door you can click on edit type make a duplicate copy of it and then you can see here you can actually change things like the width and it's as simple as just typing in how wide you want it uh, three feet two feet one foot however um, you've got the overall height so this is overall width and height then you got the rough width and rough height uh, and that would be the amount of space that would need to be cut out um, to actually install this door and that would more or less be for the schedule not really for uh, design from this point um, then you got thickness you got uh, the different styles that are on the door um, the lock rail its location um, bottom rail um, oh, I think yeah that is the that's I think that's just the size that's what that is the size of those items okay so th that's all the stuff pertaining to doors um, over in the um, properties panel you can see here you can change the swing angle so let's say maybe I just want it to be a 45 degree swing 
And you can see now this door, that particular door is now 45 degrees. Uh, let me click on it again. Um, let's see, threshold, that's if you want a threshold on the door. Most interior doors do not have that, but exterior doors do. Uh, head height, that's the height of the header of the door. If I adjust that, um, it's going to basically, it will increase the actual height of the door overall. Um, then, of course, you've got the seal height, which is all the way at the bottom. Now, if I do want to change the size of this door, let's say I'm doing sort of one of those doors for like your water here and what have you, then I would uh, say, let me make this three feet. So it'll be three feet off the ground, the seal height. Okay, then I'm going to go, let me click on it again. I'm going to go down here, make sure that the, uh, see, this did change the head height. It changed along with that, so they're tied together somehow. Uh, but let's see if I can change that back to six foot eight inches, and then the sill height stay the same. Now nope, sill height changed too, so there's probably something else I have to do um, to go in and and change that to where I can make one of those elevated, you know, three quarter doors. But they're not going to test you on that, so don't worry too much about that. Uh, but other than that, that's all of your doors. There's nothing else to it.